Thank you. All good? Um, uh, just from the game yesterday, Derek Henry had a, uh, um, a contusion to the thigh. I think he'll be all right um, for this game. And then uh, Jonathan Cyprian and uh, Corey Davis, I'll let you know more on them on Wednesday. I'm not going to rule them out yet, but um, I'll give you more information Wednesday about those two. Other than that, we're pretty healthy for uh, our football team. What was your, uh, I guess, biggest takeaway watching the film? How different was it from what you initially perceived? Uh, the effort. effort was outstanding on all three phases of our team. Um, <clears throat> from really start to finish, it was really, uh, you know, we knew what kind of game we were, gonna, we were getting ourselves into. And um, I think our guys showed, um, first of all, what kind of shape they're in to be able to play at the level that they played at. But that was the most impressive thing I took away from it. How kind of impact did uh, Marcus's cadence or hard count have on, on the game? Well, we got, I think we got him to jump five times. Um, <clears throat> not only do you get, the obviously, the penalties, but you also get them to a point – uh, how aggressive do they want to come off the ball based on the cadence? So um, that was a, that was a big uh, that was a big factor in us. Again, um, putting us in a position to make some of the calls we made offensively. How much did, did stuff you did in the first half that maybe didn't work uh, p- pay off in terms of setting things up offensively in the second half? A little bit, a little bit. Um, we didn't put anything new in. We we. Uh, you know, we stuck with the plan. We went back in at halftime and talked about some things we hadn't gotten to or needed to get back to. And uh, but nothing was really that we saw that we didn't already have in that we didn't feel like we could attack these guys with. Taewon, maybe one of the fakes to Taewon kind of play into the Johnu play later. Uh, part of it, um, you know, we we get the ball to him on on some. Gimmicks, and uh, you know, all we were doing was faking a reverse. If you can get somebody there, just to get their attention on him, anybody, especially the cover guy, and I think the cover guy, the cover linebacker. Um, if you just if you get nosy and you poke it, you poke, put your eyes in the backfield, and you have an eye violation, then uh, somebody can pop open like John. John who ran a really good route. It looked <clears throat> how it unfolded. Looked just like that in Friday's practice. Why was that offensive line so effective against their front? I mean, no sacks, not even one hit quarterback hit uh they they played well they communicated well um that's a that's a very good front now that's a really good front that does they do a lot of things they do a lot of movement they hit us a couple times in the run game because of the movement but um we were just in very good sync with the way um the protection scheme worked out the backs did a good job anytime rushers know that they they got possibility of getting you know cracked in the ribs on the side that slows it down a little bit but uh, i i thought our guys um just, just the way they work together was a big factor. Pass rush, rush too. The blocking that you implement for the running backs and receivers down the field and practice and whatnot. Do you see some of those coming out on that screen? You know, the screen plays yeah. and then the Demarco big run. Yeah, I, th- I thought our receivers blocked well. I mean, we, you know, some of the runs that we had Marcus on were crack blocks by uh, by Eric Decker. I thought they blocked extremely well. I, that, that's you have to do that in our offense. I mean, that's not a, like a choice or a. That that's a must in our offense. That our guys outside block, and they do a great job of blocking. Especially when you know these defenses that have the eighth guy in there. We're we're trying to get the ball to the corner if we can. I know Wolin had your only sack, but did you did you think pressure on Wilson was was uh, they were they were coming after him. They were, uh, I mean, we had uh, six or really seven legit shots of getting him down. Um, we didn't, but he was he was running. Um, and our guys never never let up. Never get like I, I told you before the game. We didn't want to get frustrated by not being able to get him. And he's a hard guy to get. That was evident yesterday. But uh, now that that was what I'm talking about. The effort nonstop to continue to try and get him. Is that a situation where the sacks don't truly tell the story of how you guys graded the performance on the line? I'd say that. Yeah. I mean, we had you, know, you can count them as missed tackles, missed sacks, whatever you want, but. When you're forcing them out of the pocket and making them do things, you know, receivers got to stay open, try to stay open. Um, you know, um, yeah, we, I mean, that, that was a plus for us yesterday, moving him out and making him make some throws. And obviously, he, he's done that his whole career, but uh, not enough to beat us. Is a lot of Deshaun Watson enough to see if there are a lot of similarities between he and Wilson? Or? I, I have not, I've, uh, not a lot. I've seen some plays, you know, just. Just like the regular folks uh, that have seen him, um, some of the runs he's made, he he has the ability to uh, 
to extend plays, just like just like uh, Russell. What did you think of Sherman's uh, play on the sideline, and did it warrant more than it earned him based on what he had already done? Uh, I, I, unnecessary, totally unnecessary. Um, I, the outcome of what happened was, you know, to have two penalties nullify each other. Basically, he got a clean shot on our quarterback, and there was no penalty. I mean, there was no negative ramifications for their team with that hit he put on our quarterback, which uh, we may bring that up to the competition committee about a, a rule change because you can't do that and then have no uh, ramifications against your team. There's no, negative impact, no negative impact on their team on that play. Was there a positive impact for your team, the way guys stepped in? To- it didn't surprise me. And it wasn't just players. It was a bench area. It was uh, – um, this is a very close locker room now. This is a, this is a close team. I mean, in coaching and trainers, I mean, this is a close team. When you do something like that, you're going to get – there's going to be retaliation. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you that as I stand there every time. Is this a closer team than you've ever had here? Uh, than I've been here, since I've been here. Why do you think it's come to that? How has it gotten that way? Because they um, they work together. They, they, they work hard. Um, they spend a lot of time together in here. Um, just, I think a lot of things we do leading up to this time, starting in April, of what we do with our team, of some of the things we do, make it fun around here. And I think uh, there's a lot of, that, there's a whole lot that goes into it. But it, in the long run, they are um, they care about each other. Um, they're they're all competitors, and they all got each other's backs. And when something like that takes place, that's that's what I tried to explain to the officials yesterday. I mean, I, I'm. There's no way we're not going to do what we did. Um, there's no way. Is that sure. easy, easier leading up to the stuff before the game for the guys to all rally around together when you have a tight-knit locker room like that? Yes. Yeah. What, what, the, what was kind of the conversation that was had to, to get to that point? Before the game? Yeah. Um, again, I played, I've, I've played this more when I was in Atlanta as a coordinator, but I, I know this team's – uh, mentality and how they, you know, how they play. It's a, it's a physical team, um, very confident team. Um, I just, I, you know, I, basically how I, the game played out. I'd already told the team that's how we, it will end um, if we continue to play at the level we need to play at. But we got to do it over and over throughout the whole game. The game will end that way if we play that way. Two second halves where you kind of seem like you worn teams down. I mean, con- conditioning a part of it, you think? I, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, we're not we're not a big, you know, we don't do a lot of conditioning. A lot of guys do it on their own if they need it, and that's what I tell them. I don't know your body. You know your body better than I do. We condition in practice on the plays. If you watch watch our plays, everybody's finishing at the ball, just like they do in a real game. I mean, they're conditioning their minds to go to the ball because good things happen when you go to the football, but they're also getting in a game type condition that uh, that games should be easier than they are in practices. And uh, I think it's, it's made a difference in these last couple of games. How much been the, is patience a hallmark for you guys in the run game? You stuck with it and, and broke through on defense the way you're talking about uh, handling Wilson. seems like you, you had to kind of stay patient and were willing to do something. Yeah, that. again, if you the big word of the week was frust- don't get frustrated. Um, it would have been really easy to. I mean, you, you got them and you don't all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, it makes guys in the back end that have to cover longer. And, you know, you can, I've, been on, I've been a part of where it gets very frustrating when you can't stop somebody, especially when they go into a two-minute mode at the end of the game when all he's going to do is drop back and have the ability to scramble around and make plays. He's won a lot of games doing that. He's won a lot of games doing that. And our, our guys st- stuck with the plan and uh, – you know, accomplish what we wanted to do. Is this a patient team, and is it hard in the sport to ask you to go, go, go to kind of? Be not, patient? not if you, not if you're prepared for it. And you talked about it. You know what's coming. Um, our guys watch a lot of tape. They, they, they realize that there's going to be some plays made. That fourth down play that he made was, you know, absolutely uh, uh, Russell Wilson like. Um, but we knew that was going to be a game all the way to the last whistle. I mean. You know, didn't know they were going to put 12 guys out there. That was a benefit for us that we didn't have to have to punt it. But all the way to that last play, we knew it was going to be a game. Anything? Marcus started one of one of seven. You had four, three and outs. Was there anything that he changed or did differently once you went back and watched the film that kind of got him on track? He did. 
He did. He got the receivers to run really better routes. <laughs> he did. He, uh, we need to be, we need, just like I've said before, if you're not where you're supposed to be and you don't run at the right depth, you can put all the blame on the quarterback. But you're going to throw where you're supposed to be. And uh, we need to be more detailed. Those first, those first 12 plays that we played ran yesterday, when I watched the tape this morning, I put a little asterisk on was it the, the Seahawks or the Titans that failed to execute the play. And eight of the 12 was, was us. So those are things we could still need to clean up, especially when you're going to play uh, a defense like that and like the one we got coming up here this week. So Marcus himself talked to the receivers at, at that point? Too. Yeah, and we showed the receivers. Coaches coached them, and we showed them. Look to the Dory's return again. <clears throat> uh, I think it was a block in the back. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, it was. I could see why they would call that. It was unnecessary. What he, that that um, that guy would not have made the play. So it was really not a good decision on Flew Ellen's part to block him. Are red gloves the best idea? Are red gloves the best idea for somebody trying to? <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters if they throw the red gloves up like I didn't do it. You, you know that that's a that's a guilty by you know for sure. What's been the big key to the explosive plays the last couple of weeks, but especially yesterday? Uh, yesterday, I'll say this: a lot of guys down the field making a second second effort. The the run by um, Demarco really blocked well at the point with Dennis Kelly, and then uh, Nudie Johnston Fowler blocking the point, and then blocking the point all the way down the field, blocking the same guy. At where the play started to where the play ended. Um, good things happen when you when you hustle, and that's that's a great. It's easy to come in here and put that up in front of the team and show. I mean, even the play, the third down and ten play on defense, where we had a breakdown in coverage, they threw it out in the flat. There's nobody out there. Well, you see us swarming, but the guy that makes the tackle is Jayon, who's a spy, who runs 25 yards to the ball, makes the play, ends up on fourth and one. That was all effort. And, you know, just simply put, it, very great effort game. So Dodd played for the first time this season. What did you see from him? Uh, he did some good things. I, I, there's some things uh, I'd like to see more of. Just uh, and he knows what I'm talking about. But um, I thought he did some good things. I thought he got better the more he played. What kind of have you uh, have you gotten from the, the decision to stay in the locker room yesterday? Um, I've been in here, so I've none. Well, I just tell you, like when we report, like, even starting with Miss Amy's statements, and then show what you guys said afterwards. Um, a lot of the response that we get is uh, misguided, is fair, uh, to horrific. Um, what what would you? And these people call themselves Titans fans. I guess what would you say to that faction? Uh, you know what? Yesterday I made a statement at the end of my press conference. You know, we we made a, a statement as a as an organization, and then I made a statement at the end of it. And I'll stick with what I said at the end of it, and I'm not going to go any further than that. TMZ reports that Eric Decker's wife said he did not know. Who reported? TMZ. And, and who's that? It's a, a sports gossip website that is generally accurate. Uh, did, did Eric Decker know? Did everybody know what, what that's, the plan was? Uh, that's what I was told, yes. About was it a collective thing in the locker room? Or Again, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to go any further with it. I made a statement at the end of the press conference yesterday. That statement's going to stay. You, you said that's what you were told. Were you not the one that delivered the message to the players about what the plan was? <clears throat> I made a statement at the end of my press conference last night that the organization made a statement, and I've made my own opinion on it, and I'm going to leave it at that. If it continues, we do it again next What part week? of – I'm not going to talk about it, Jason. Uh, uh, Wesley Woodyard, uh, is he seeing the field more? Man on year? a mission. He, he's a man man on a mission. He uh, He's playing about as high a level as you can play for that position. Is, is he seeing the field more? Yes. Yeah, definitely. In passing situations, is he being used more maybe yes. than he had the past couple yeah. years? Yes. Yes. The thinking with the change. He's just playing well. He's really playing well. He's he's making a lot of plays. Not just I mean, he made you know um, two tackle for losses yesterday, but he's made a lot of tackles in each game. But his his, his covering is very good. Is Avery matching that, or is Avery suffering? I'd say I'd say uh, I'd say uh, Wesley's playing at a higher level right now. What's the uh, what's the mission? What's the man on a mission? What's his what is his mission? I don't know. I, I just he's playing. Um, 
he's playing a lot of snaps and he's being very productive. And uh, I mean, I don't know if you watch, the, you know, he's he, he's on our punt return team. He took one of their guys trying to go down and cover, and he took him into their bench area. I mean, just totally eliminated this guy from the play. Um, he's just doing a lot for us, and uh, he's just he's just playing good football. And McCain wound up with more snaps than Sims. Was that the kind of a, a game plan wrinkle, a matchup issue? Yeah, um, I don't think it was anything. More than just the rotation, with the, you know, especially with the heat. <clears throat> Special teams, I guess, sometimes you've taken for granted, but, but suck up and turn uh, about as you well as you can uh, kick and punt in a game. Um, the objective, the must, was to eliminate uh, 16 out of the game plan, and Ryan kicked seven touchbacks, which there were no way he could return it for a touchdown, and then um, um, Kern's just. Punted the probably the best, like Steve uh, Hoffman said, he's been in the business a long time. Probably the best game he's seen a punter have in a in his career. What's been your plan on returns for when Weems is back there and when Adoree's back there? Again, just a little bit more of uh, Weems has been backed up punts, making some good decisions, making sure we get the ball. Don't put Adoree, a rookie, back there, making having to make some decisions in some of these games and. We trust them, but right now, just just the rotation of where is the ball going to possibly land and the decision making that goes into it. How would you grade Marcus's play over his first three games so far? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. We're we're asking him a lot to do, um, a lot more than we have in the, the the two previous years. And I'd I'd say we're getting in the right place, and uh, he's making some plays for us. Not just not just. Uh, I mean, he's a threat in the run game, as, as you've seen. I watched the frustration on their sideline on some of the runs he had. I mean, they can't, they can't, he's a guy, again, you can't, you can't have enough defenders if he's running it, but he, I, 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 very productive. It's still a small sample size, obviously, but it stands out compared to how great you were in the red zone last year, that you haven't been as good this year. Is that reached a point that it's a concern yet, or? Uh, I think it's still too early. Um, we we did some things down there yesterday that uh, we got. I mean, we got to do better. Again, they're they're good, and if we're not on top of our game, we're not gonna, we're not going to be successful down there. But Eric guilty of uh, what he was charged with on the Marcus's room. Uh, <laughs> if if that's the case, you can call it every every play, every single play. Somebody's hand's going to be outside the framework of the body. So that's what they called, and you know. I, why then? I don't know. And why from where it came from? I don't know. How about the other one on him? Uh, that one. There's a lot of guys in the league made a living for a long time doing that, and uh, just got caught. Call it. I don't know. But again, I don't mind if, it, if it's just called consistently, week in and week out. When it's done, it's a penalty. So it either is or it isn't. It just needs to be done consistently. You feel like about this team, team that seems to get stronger as the game goes on. Is that something you coach, or is that just a mentality? It's just they have a mentality. Going in? This room, it's just a mentality how they how they work together and how they feel about each other. I mean, they just, they're they're this has been they're resilient as can be. Um, there is no let up in this room. That, that that has nothing to do with this. Is, that's just the makeup of who we are. How much do you feel like this team has matured from the end of last year? <clears throat> I think we have. We've you know we've been in a. You know, this has been a, a pretty good schedule here these first three weeks, and it's just going to continue on. And uh, where they're competing, um, they're not intimidated by anybody, and I think uh, that says a little bit about their maturity. Because it been, looks like you've been using a lot of the Morgan, Arakpo, and Walden all together in the in the past right. situations. I wondered if that played a part. Maybe Klug uh, sitting yesterday was that uh, a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, that's tough. That's Carl's a tough guy. Anybody that I put have to put down the seven guys I put down that aren't injured, um, very difficult decision. But that was just a decision made based on some of the things we were going to do defensively. So um, again, that'll be a week by week type of deal. No more Corey on Wednesday, but when he just goes to finally get back in, is he? He, I think you talked about his preparedness and, and readiness. He's, he's ready. Yeah, he he spends a lot of time. Um, yeah, he's ready. You could tell when he got into the Oakland game, he, he prepares. There, there's not a lot of, a lot of mistakes by him when he gets in there. This team hasn't won in Houston in several years. Is this 
another one of those benchmarks that you have to clear as a franchise? I think it's one of those games, again, if you want to win the division, you got to win on the road and you got to beat the teams that have won the division, especially this team who's won it the last two years. So, yeah, it's an important, important win. Thanks, Coach. All right. Uh, be a normal schedule this week. I'll send it out tomorrow. Uh, I'm still waiting to finalize the uh, conference call stuff.